Hi guys, I'm Dr. Anne and this is The Health Hub. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're talking about cons, cons of working in rural areas. Um, if you haven't watched my pros video, make sure you start with looking at the pros because I promise you, at some point, the pros outweigh the cons, okay? So, so yeah, make sure you go over right back to that video before watching this one so that you look at the interesting parts, the more appealing parts of, you know, having to work in the rural okay so today we'll be looking at the top five reasons why working in a rural city or working in a rural hospital is not necessarily pleasant so basically i've been putting this video off for some time because i personally i, I really my heart is in the rurals and i would like more doctors to work in the rurals at this point in time even if doctors want to work in the rurals there's still issues of you know posts so i'm hoping that the government eventually will uh, you know create more posts because there's doctors that are still sitting at home with no jobs um, fully qualified completed you know internship completed concert but with no job so hopefully the government gets to a place where they you know I don't know create more posts for doctors to work when they say there's a shortage of doctors it doesn't it's not on the doctor's side like it's not doctors who don't want to work it's just there's no posts available and if there's no post they essentially saying there's no money to pay you basically majority of the negative things that i'm putting out or will be putting out in this videos it's mainly political it's things that could be solved with money it's things that could be solved with you know funding etc that's the crux of this whole video so these cons apply to most healthcare facilities in rural areas in majority of provinces maybe not western cape but in majority of provinces so let us start with something light let us start with number one and number one it's basically, you know, the environment or the social factors. Né? So, you know, a lot of our studies in city-like or city areas and, you know, that expose you to a lot of things, access to a lot of things. I know Woolies means a lot to a lot of people. Um, I don't know why, but it does. In rural areas, there's not a lot of things to do. There's not a lot of things to spend your money on. I don't know if that's a negative. It is a negative because sometimes you need a bit of recreation. There's not a lot of things to spend your money on. There's no Woolies. There's no shops. The next airport is around 300 kilometers away. There's no shortcuts about it. You have to drive because you are stuck in the middle of mountains. Um, in saying that, it can get boring, you know. But a lot of people will use um, that free time to maybe study or like start a YouTube channel. But yeah, like it's just, you know there isn't much to do essentially you know and number two is that um as a young doctor you can feel isolated i know some of i know these days they're taking a lot of com serves to these rural areas and these rural small hospitals i know this like a com serve got dotrecht guys like they take people to these small small towns and you find that you are com serve now as a com serve i personally feel that you still need a better supervision like someone to be like that is the way to go yeah well so yeah you find that you are placed and you are a com serve and you are the only doctor in that hospital so this is where the whole thing of isolation comes in like you isolated you're an island you're on your own there's no one to consult besides your friends i guess there's no one to consult um you basically have to be the decision maker the nurses are looking up to you i know in rural areas of that setting, the nurses are pretty like they're on point, so they can assist with like seeing patients, especially the non complicated one, no breakthrough seizures. They see those patients, like they just manage them themselves. So you can end up literally running a whole hospital as a conserve doctor. That's why it's better like i already mentioned to do um to do your i think you will pick up in my previous video that i was mentioning that it's it's better to do your internship in a hospital that does not have a lot of supervision so that you're a bit comfortable with being on your own and making decisions nyana you know um otherwise once they throw you there you will literally cry like oh they'll call you crying like oh i have a patient like she's the abdomen is so peritonitic and it's just like says <laughs> okay I can imagine. I can only imagine. Personally, I I picked a regional, but I know that there was a chance I could have just been shipped off to a district or, uh, you know, the other small and yellow. I don't even know what they call them. They're like, they're like CHCs, but they call them hospitals. And there is a chance that I could have been placed there. But I, I honestly, I thank God because it's better when you have a bit more facilities. It's better when you have at least the x-ray and at least, you know, like 
basic things, man. Like at least someone superior who you, who's, whom you can ask and call and say, am I in the right track, you know? Yeah, in saying that, isolation is a real, real big thing. And it can be nerve-wracking and it's just scary. It's really scary, especially when you are still a junior doctor. There's no prof, there's no specialist, there's no someone to cry on. There's no sh nobody's shoulder to cry on. <laughs> you literally have to be, it's a one-man jive type situation. And in a lot of these places that are in the outskirts, like in the rural rules, I'm not there, but there are places there. In the rural rules is, is that there's no x-rays, there's no nothing. So you sort of, it's clinical medicine at its base. Like you rely, if you think that it's a new more, then you put up an ICD. Huh? But by a color, we talk about you are. You know, people get used to it. Um, let's move on to number three. Number three is infrastructure. I don't want to lose my job, but I won't be specific. But I will speak on just experience of the what things I've seen in the hospitals, in public hospitals per se. I think because of the way, let me speak for Eastern Cape, because of the way the province is set up, unlike other provinces where there's like, a, like rural areas that surround the town, in Eastern Cape there's like, a bunch of small towns like a bunch of small towns that are 50 kilometers 100 kilometers 300 kilometers away from each other ne? and the way it's set up you find that there's maybe two or three original hospitals or four at most ne? so because there's a very few like number of regional hospitals one regional hospital i work in a regional hospital one regional hospital receives calls or referrals from plus minus 25 to like 30 hospitals and clinics including gps g yeah well. so it's it's quite a lot it's a lot for a hospital to take the solution to the problem could be creating more um you know creating more equipped district hospitals because it doesn't help having a district hospital that functions like a chc so maybe creating more district hospitals that would help but at this point in time, there's so much load into the, the existing regional hospitals that they're taking. So the catchment is just, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's next spread is far off. Like it's closer to like the free state. It's far. And maybe, but see, they're sending a person, for example, let me take in, you know, in the situation of obstetrics. They say that they are referring a patient who has a fetal distress, right, from Sterk Spread Hospital, which is plus minus... 300 kilometers just the traveling is around two to three hours for an ambulance bear in mind that they have to call the ambulance so it's just weird it's just wrong so basically the doctor picks up this is a fetal distress then calls the doctor in the referral hospital or regional hospital i have a person with fetal distress because their hospital isn't equi equipped with enough doctors to be able to cut at night not that there isn't not that there isn't um a theater but because there aren't many people to work in the theater it's ridiculous that referral hospital will basically call an ambulance after having discussed with that doctor who is receiving and after that um they will wait for an ambulance to come the ambulance will come from wherever let's say a place that's 70 kilometers away from that place where the hospital is and you know one hour lost then when the ambulance arrives, the time from when the ambulance arrives to take the patient to the referral hospital, six, we level my five, six hours, guys. Like, sometimes it gets so bad to the point where it's like my eight hours. <laughs> Just like, what is the point? Like, we're failing. See, I failed. Like, we failed. What, what are we doing? We're just present for no reason. So, so yeah, when I, it's those things it's just those things and there's no way about them there's no way around them that's just the way they are and you can't say you're going to do nothing to change them because it's the way the system is set up so it's very very frustrating to be working in an area like that some areas don't have blood you know if someone starts bleeding from like a hospital 200 kilometers away we'll figure five hours later guys it's just it's it's a mess it, it, it's a mess there's also issues of you know e-backlogs with you know scans you know getting a scan done you know with ops sometimes there's backlogs i know with ortho you come in even in, in gauteng the same applies that if you need a hip replaced or a knee replaced today um and you come in you only get your a date for 2025 we have so there's just those things man backlogs 
I could go literally on and on and on. If the electricity cuts, the generator, in the whole hospital, then there's no electricity in the whole hospital. Lack of staff, be it porters, you push your own patients. Nurses are having to nurse more patients than what they are supposed to. And then people go around saying nurses are mean. I mean, now I mean, if, you know, you're having to look after eight, ten patients, um, do vitals, do all these things, um, give medication, make sure that they are okay, monitor them. It's just like a cycle of problemo, packing, packing on top of each other, one on top of the other. That's the only reason why I would get medical aid. That is literally the only reason why I have medical aid because I know how the system works. I know that the system in Angelaya is functioning and there's no way about it. Like, I'm not sure, guys, unless you're in the Western Cape, unless you're literally in the Western Cape, it's it's lit. We lit systematic infrastructural issues, you know? It's it's things that can be really discouraging um, being placed in a rural setting because you just like, can things just work? Can things just function? If someone knows that this is the issue, why aren't they doing their job? Like, why aren't they making sure that this happens? If a nurse retires or a doctor retires, why does the post disappear? Do you know what I mean? It's just you mess, you guys. You mess. So number four, in terms of of the cons, it's functionality. Hey, let's start with admin. Like, when you start out, best believe there's a chance that you won't get your salary the first month. You find a lot of issues with admin, with processing of everything. Um, I know when I when I came to start Comserve. It was around that time, yeah, you know, where the financial year ends, don't, don't. It was around April, May. And um, I remember I started, beginning of May, I started working. I signed everything. I'd signed everything from the 1st of April already before I even came to start 1st of May. Um, it was around that time of COVID. And he, oh, the gala, I worked. Did an overtime, the extra overtime. And then someone calls me around the 25th of May. Um doc we we have a bit of a problem with your things and i'm like mm -hmm. but he you know the my post disappeared <laughs> and i've been working for a month can like make it make sense but he no like maybe with things of financially i disappeared i don't know i don't know how it, you can make a post disappear but it's possible it's very possible so, but he disappeared. So now that they have to employ me under a different hospital, don't don't to try to, you know, that whole thing, that whole thing took literally, Youngerland took literally three months. So I didn't get my salary for a full three months. So it's things that you have to prepare yourself when it comes when it comes to things of rural, you know, being placed in the rural. Isn't just the admin? Sometimes it's Yalekisha, you know. And then you might not get your salary, especially when starting out. But when you've already started, it's fine. It's just the initial stages. So you sort of have to prepare yourself and mentally and be like, you know, financially as well. You know, you might not get your salary for at least minimum three months, maximum three months. I already mentioned, I think, in my other video that there's also extra overtime. And with extra overtime, um, unfortunately, you have to submit every, at the end of every month, you have to submit um, the extra hours that you did so that they processed. But now it also takes forever for them to pay as under the extra overtime. Like I literally in June got money I worked for in October last year. So it, everything is just slow. <laughs> it's slow, even though they eventually pay. No, they eventually pay. But go slow. So some of the hospitals, especially the smaller Nina ones, there's lack of triaging because there's not enough staff members. Nibon ne or back ache for thirty eight years in the ER, like in casualty. I mean, are we even in emergency medicine department? Like you can't implement the right thing to be done because you don't have enough people to be doing the right thing. If you get what I mean. Let's move on to point number five. And point number five is rural patients. So rural patients are special. They come late. Like I don't know, like it's almost like to them, they must try everything that's under the sun before they actually seek medical attention. And I'm like, no, man, like, and they lie, they lie. I don't do a figure with like chronic limb ischemia from like last year. And you guys, no, 
I was bit by a spider last night. Don't lie. <laughs> Don't lie. You weren't bit by a spider. This thing is old, man. So a lot of them, a lot of them will try a lot of things. Like, why do Like, I think it's London. Like, guys, I'm just like, stop it. Like, just come. Like, when you see that there's something wrong with you, seek medical attention early. We should learn from white people, man. Like, they will bring a pimple to the hospital. Well, black people will have a whole cancer growing and expanding. By Amanda Bay spray sanitizer. True story. True story. Instead of actually like saying, I have a lamp. It's weird. It's unusual. Oh, now we got for the skin. Let me bring it to the hospital. Nah. By Linda. Like to the end stages and almost more engaged. It's almost like palliation. Like it's just not rewarding. Like you're not getting to get them to a good place because they're not coming early and i guess it's also a thing of maybe we should be educating our own people to like seek medical care and i know you know there's social media doctors you know by social media doctors i mean the general population advising each other where's facebook groups like someone will be like oh my child has wounds on the head blah 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 i don't know what i'm just like oh <laughs> this person just like go to the hospital Please go to the hospital, do the right thing. So, so yeah, it's 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 really it's really something that's frustrating, and it's something that we have to continually. Whenever you see, maybe nurses also should do it in primary care facilities to just educate people. And a lot of our people are also scared of operations. Um, you know, be it the cancer patients, they're scared of maybe getting mastectomies. It progress. They were tend to bond by and then the palliative care alpac. We call the chronic kidney disease. People don't take the antihypertensive medication. People just I don't know if it's lack of education or what. Like I thought I'd never see E AIDS Leon Gossi Johnson from like way back when. Like we're in an era where E ARVs are like top notch, like and they're available. People don't have to get sick. People don't have to get T B. Like ERVs are like next generation. Like you get it the moment you find out you take your medication and you're okay. But Sabona, like people who are in stage HIV wasting syndrome, and I was just so shocked. And I did work in, I never saw that much actually as yes, when I was in Gauteng province, but in Eastern Cape, it's all, it's shocking. Someone will literally like lock themselves into their house and stop taking their medication. Maybe it's a mental, you know, mental thing. Maybe they need counseling. Maybe not doing the right thing. So who knows what challenges with when it comes to patients sometimes they don't do the right thing and you have to spend more time educating and you have to spend more time you know with counseling with regard to taking of medication importance of taking medication benefits of taking medication what will happen if you don't take medication so i think it's things that we have to sort of like reiterate all the time otherwise it's depends on your palliation since palliative care basically end of life medicine but it's the reality of the situation. The healthcare system in South Africa is not where it's supposed to be. There's so much room for improvement. There's so much, um, you know, areas in which we're still failing people in South Africa. There's so many areas where we still, you know, need to better our service, the service that we give to people. And we're not doing them justice. And the sad thing about it is that now, if you if you talk about it as a doctor, um, you sort of crucified the, for telling the truth. And Kunjeana everywhere, like poor Raf. I hope I hope they didn't discourage you. Maybe see it as a challenge. I don't know. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Also comment um if you have any any experiences of raw settings or things that you still to date find frustrating that are happening at your public hospital. And if I mentioned any of the things, maybe even if you are not in the medical sector that you have experienced or seen. They're true. I, I, I don't even want to say it's a lie. It probably is true. <laughs> Whatever thing, however bad it is, it probably has happened and it probably is true. But let this motivate you to also just at least go to the rural areas to at least, you know, contribute. Just make a, some form of difference. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you on my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.